men. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yes, Amen. 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 I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 5. Luke, chapter 5. We are doing a lengthy study on the subject of healing. And we divided the study up into three phases. And we covered phases one and two on our series on healing. And we want to begin tonight our third phase in our study of healing. And you remember, I'll do just a quick review for those of you who were not here for the other phases. You, re you remember in the first phase that we spent eight weeks addressing the most frequently asked questions concerning the subject of healing. We covered the questions, is healing God's will? And we learned that the answer is yes. yes. We learn from the story in Luke chapter 5 about the leper that came to Jesus and he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus answered and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said to him, I will. It is my will. Now be made clean. Be healed. So healing is God's will. We learn that how Jesus went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. Mm -hmm. Healing all. He didn't just heal a few. He healed all that came to him. Mm -hmm. He is a healing Jesus, just like John sings about in that great song. And we come to the question, does God put sickness on you in order to teach you a lesson or in order to make you more humble? No, no He does not. Where does sickness come from? We answered yeah. that question. Yes, the right. devil. We covered the story in Luke chapter 13 about the woman that was bowed over and could in no wise lift herself up. And Jesus said to her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And it was on the Sabbath day, and you remember the religious leaders became angry that Jesus would heal on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, Ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound, yes. lo, these 18 years be loosed from this infirmity on the Sabbath day? Jesus said, that Satan had bound her, Amen. but Jesus loosed her. Right. So it's the enemy that binds you. It's the enemy that brings sickness. And the Lord is the one that brings healing. Mm -hmm. And we learn from the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how that Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And we learn from John 10.10 10, that the thief, Jesus said, cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The thief, the enemy, comes to steal your health. To steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And then we answered the question, is it God's will to heal everybody? Yes. We read in Luke chapter 4 how Jesus healed all that were sick. In a village where he was, he healed every sick person that came to him. We read in Psalms chapter 103. The word says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Right. Yes. And then we answered the question, why do good Christians get sick and die without receiving healing? And we answered the question, if healing is God's will, then why isn't everybody healed? And we learned that the main reason that people don't receive healing is because of unbelief or not exercising faith for healing. 
you remember? We covered Mark chapter 6, where the passage it tells us about Jesus being in his own hometown. And it doesn't say that he would not do mighty works. It said that he could there do no mighty works. Why? Because of their unbelief. So that is the main reason why people fail to receive healing. And then some people don't receive their healing because they think that healing is passed away. They think when the book of Acts was finished and all the apostles died that healing passed away. No. And some people think that God only healed back in Bible days and that God doesn't heal today. And some people think that God gets glory out of their sickness. No. Right. No. A thousand times no. We covered all of these questions in detail in the first phase of our series on healing. So if you still don't understand or know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is God's will to heal you and that God does not put sickness on you. If you still don't know that or if you still have questions, then get the tapes and listen to that series and listen to the Word of God and get your Bible and read the Word of God and read How Does Faith Come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And stay in the Word and listen to the Word talk until you know that you know that you know that healing is God's will. Now, I want you to look for a minute in Luke chapter 5. I wasn't going to cover this, and so I didn't put it in your handout, but I just kept feeling in place of the Holy Spirit to, to just touch on this story. In Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 25, we have the account of Jesus going into a certain place. <clears throat> Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Watch. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought a, in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, say, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived or knew their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon, he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. I guess so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, I want you to notice the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, they didn't have any doubt that Jesus could heal. But what they did not believe was that Jesus had the power to forgive sins. And all the church has done over the last 2,000 years is reverse this. Mm -hmm. right. People today don't have any doubt that Jesus forgives sin. sin. Yeah. But for the biggest part of the church, they don't believe that Jesus heals <coughs> and that it's His will to heal all. That it's His will to heal them. They believed it when Jesus was here. 
but they didn't believe he could forgive sins. And now it's right reversed. The church has no doubt whatsoever that Jesus forgives sins. But we don't know the truth that he is our healer. But we are learning that yes, through this are. series on healing. Right. And you remember we've just finished our second phase of our series on healing. We covered eight different New Testament methods of healing. And there are more than eight, but I just chose eight so I could cover them in detail. And the, each one of these ways is just one way, but not the only way that you can receive healing for your body. We covered the first way was by calling for the elders of the church in James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Number two, by the laying on of hands, Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Number three, by having faith in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Acts 3, 16. You remember the lame man at, sitting at the gate, beautiful? Peter and John went by, and Peter said, look on us. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise uh, up uh, and walk. And he took him by the hand. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and went walking with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. And the religious leader said, whoa, 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 whoa. Tell us. Hey, we want to know by what power, by whose name have you done this? Peter said, it was, it was his name through faith in his name that has made this man strong and given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Peter said it was his name. Whose name? The Jesus. name of Jesus. <laughs> that made that man strong and brought healing to his crippled legs. Having faith in the name of Jesus is one way that you can receive healing. And we covered the fourth way was by the prayer of agreement. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. If two people agree on earth is touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. For we're two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Amen. Number five, by praying the prayer of faith. Mark chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. Number six, gifts of healings. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. We covered a whole series on the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the nine gifts of the Spirit is gifts of healings. And then we covered the seventh way that you can receive healing is by partaking of the Lord's table or communion. We had a special time that yes, night of learning the Word of God on the area of receiving healing through communion. And then last week by speaking words of faith, Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 through 13 was the account of the ten lepers that Jesus cleansed and the one leper who came back to praise Him and give glory to God. Jesus said to the one, Thy faith hath made thee whole. And didn't we have a time? I tell you, where else can you go and see leprosy disappear right before your eyes? I tell you, where else can you go to Bible study that you not only hear a teaching, but you see a teaching also? I tell you, we had a time last week. Now tonight, I want to begin the third phase of our series on healing. And that phase is going to be how to receive and keep your healing is what we're going to cover tonight, or how to maintain your health. And also during this series, we're going to cover healing scriptures. We're going to go through the Word of God and see wonderful scriptures that you can use that will build your faith and cause faith to rise in your heart 
in the area of healing so that when the enemy brings sickness to you, you can have those scriptures ready and you can go to the Word of God and speak the Word of God and receive healing. It's, it's not just enough when you hear the Word, say you are prayed for for healing, when you receive healing, it's not enough just to receive it, but you must know how to keep healing. You must know how to not lose the healing that you received if you, when you was prayed for, or when hands were laid upon you, or when you received communion at the communion table. It, when healing comes into your body, it's not just enough to receive healing, you've got to know how to keep that healing, how to maintain that help that you received. Turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. It's over close to the end of the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 11. We want to cover first of all, how do you receive healing? You receive healing just like you receive salvation. And like you receive anything else that you ever will receive from God, you receive it by faith. Right. Hebrews chapter 11 <laughs> verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You receive your healing by faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. And if you have sickness in your body and if you exercise your faith to believe that you receive healing, then healing will enter into your physical body by faith. You receive healing by faith. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I like that NIV, the New International Version of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The NIV says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. <coughs> and certain of what we do not see. I like that. I like that. If there is pain in your body, you don't feel healed, do you? But the Word of God says, with His stripes ye were healed. But you say, I don't feel healed. I hurt. My body has pain. It doesn't matter what we feel like. The Word of God says, with His stripes we are healed. And we must speak the Word of God regardless of how our body feels. And we must be certain and know what the Word of God <coughs> says concerning the area of healing. And you must speak the Word of God even though you may not see the manifestation of healing with your natural eyes. Faith says, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by the way I feel. I'm only moved by the Word of God. And the Word of God says, Jesus Himself took my infirmities, bore my sicknesses, and with His stripes I am healed. And when you begin to speak the Word of God to your body, and when you keep speaking the Word of God, and you keep speaking the Word of God to your body, you speak it and you speak it and you speak it until the manifestation of healing comes into your body. Is this easy? No. No, it's not easy to do this. But it's the way we will receive healing. It's through faith. Through faith. If you come up for prayer and if hands are laid upon you, you have to receive healing by faith. When at that time, when you are prayed for, you may not feel any better. In fact, you may feel worse. But does that 
Do no. you go by the way you feel? No. no, you go by the Word of God. Now, where some people miss it in the area of exercising their faith or in the area of healing is that they deny the circumstances. What do I mean by denying the circumstances? That's when you say, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. I don't have a run nose. <laughs> I don't have a cold. <laughs> I'm not hoarse. I'm not hoarse. I'm not hoarse. No. The fact is, you do have a runny nose. The fact is that you do have a cold. But the truth is the Word of God. Yes. And the truth says Jesus Himself took my infirmities, bore my sicknesses, and with His stripes I am healed. You don't receive healing by denying the circumstances and saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. That's not exercising faith. That is just speaking empty words out of your head. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And when you place the Word of God in your heart, and when you speak it out your mouth, then your body will have to get in line with the Word of God. Amen. It right. will get in line. It will obey the Word. You may have gone to the doctor, and you may have had test results that the doctor walks into your room with the test results in his hands and he may go, mm, mm, oh my. The test results show that you have a blockage in your heart. Ever been there? <laughs> the test results show that you have a leaking valve in your heart. That is a fact. Yeah. It's a fact that the test results show that you have heart problems. But the truth of the Word of God says that my heart is fixed, oh God. <laughs> my heart is fixed. The Word of God says to his own self, bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed. Right. The fact is that there is a heart problem. The truth is what the Word of God Hallelujah. says. And it depends on which one you'll have with which one you keep your eyes on. Yes. If you keep your eyes on, the doctor said I have heart problems. The doctor says I may have to have surgery. Or if you keep your eyes on the Word of God and what the Word of God says, then the truth of the Word of God will replace <laughs> the fact <laughs> that there is a heart yes. problem. In fact, the truth, the doctor said she had a leaking valve. Showed her the pictures. The doctor said she had a, a blocked artery. But the truth of the Word of God brought healing into her body. And then the next test results, the doctor said, hey, she has a perfect heart. There's nothing wrong with her heart. She has the heart of a young person. I wish I had her heart. What happened? The truth of the Word of God overcame the fact that the heart problem was there and healing manifested in her body. Now let's read this verse one more time. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Look at it one more time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence is the doctor's report. The evidence says you're sick, but the truth is the Word of God that says with His stripes ye are healed. Now notice it says, faith is when? Yesterday? Last week? 
When does it say faith is? Now. now. Faith is. Faith is now. You don't say, I believe God is going to heal me. I believe He'll heal me someday. When He's ready, I believe He'll heal me. No, that is future. That is not faith. When is faith? Now. Faith is now. Right. It's not in the future. Faith says, I believe I receive healing in my body now. You don't say, I believe God's going to heal me. No, what you say is, I believe I receive healing in my body. And you speak the Word of God. We learned in our study on receiving healing by partaking of the Lord's table or communion, we learned the truth of what happened when Jesus went to that whipping post. And when the soldiers whipped him with that cat of nine tail and placed stripes upon his back, we learned the truth that Jesus bore your sicknesses and that Jesus has already done all he is ever going to do about your healing. He is, he said when he was on the cross, he said, It, it is, is finished. It is done. And He is seated now at the right hand of the Father. He finished the work. The work is complete. He's not ever going to go to the cross and die anymore for your sins. And He's not ever going to go to the whipping post anymore to receive stripes upon His back for your healing. It is finished. It is done. And all we have to do is receive what Jesus has already provided for us. Healing is ours. Jesus paid the price for healing for your body. 2,000 years ago, right. the price has already been paid. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is decide that we're going to receive what has already been provided for us. Amen? Amen. Right. Now turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. To me it's the most clear picture that there is concerning healing. Why haven't we been walking in this truth of healing all of our Christian life? Why haven't we been walking in health? Because we didn't know it, did we? We have heard all of our lives that Jesus forgives sin. If you came from a denominational background like I did, you heard a salvation sermon every Sunday whether you needed it or not. If the whole congregation was saved, you still heard a salvation sermon. We don't have any doubt that Jesus forgives sin and that He bore our sin on the cross. But we have not been taught that not only did He bear our sin, but He also bore our sicknesses. And if we had been taught that, as much as we've been taught about salvation, our faith level in the area of healing would be just as great as our faith level is in the area of salvation. Boy, don't you wish we had have had that privilege Amen. to have heard the truth of the Word of God all of our life. Jesus provided more for us through His death, burial, and resurrection than just forgiveness of sins and one day going to heaven. He provided also for healing for your physical body. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely He had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. I want you to look at verse 4 at that word, griefs. See it? Surely he had borne our griefs. I put it in your handout so that you could see. That word griefs in the Hebrew, and remember the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. That word griefs in the Hebrew 
is number 2483. If you look it up in a concordance, and that Hebrew word is C-H-O-L-I-Y. That's the Hebrew word there that's translated Greeks in our English Bible. And that word in the Hebrew means sickness. According to the Brown, Driver, and Briggs Hebrew lexicon, the word griefs means sickness. And the word sorrows means pain. So we can read this verse from the original language, and it says, Surely he had borne our sickness and disease and carried our pain. And the last part of verse 5 says, And with his stripes we are healed. Matthew quotes from this prophecy of Isaiah in the book of Matthew. In his epistle, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Matthew 8, 17. The whole first part of this chapter pertains to nothing but healing. It gives us four instances, four different examples of Jesus healing. In Matthew 8. Oh, now I want to pick it up in verse 16 and then read verse 17. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed a few people? No. Healed some people? All. Healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, or Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew is quoting Isaiah. You remember Isaiah looked ahead in time. He prophesied about the fact that, that Jesus would go to the cross. He prophesied it 750 to 800 years before Jesus ever came and was born of a virgin Mary and and walked here on earth for 33 years and went to the cross and died. Isaiah saw this. He prophesied it. And it came to pass. Matthew said, this is what Isaiah saw. This is what Isaiah prophesied. <coughs> this is a fulfilling of the prophecy that Isaiah spoke all those hundreds of years ago that said himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses. Jesus wants you well. And Peter tells us the same thing over in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Peter said, who his own self bear or bore our sins in his own body. We know that he bore our sins, don't we? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. We know that he bore our sins. But we haven't known the truth that he also bore our sicknesses. And with his stripes, Peter says, ye were healed. Isaiah said, we are healed. Peter said, ye were healed. And somewhere between we are and ye were, I am. I am healed. Right. And when the enemy comes and attacks us, when he tries to bring sickness upon our body, we must go to the Word of God. And we must speak what the Word of God says. And read those healing scriptures out loud so that we can hear it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Read them out loud so that the Word of God will go in your ear down in your heart and will come back out your mouth. 
And so that we can hear the Word of God, so the enemy can hear the truth of the Word of God. They overcame Him, how? By the blood of the Lamb and by the Word of their testimony. And when we speak the Word of God in faith, then he, sickness cannot stay in our body. Healing will have to manifest in our body because the truth of the Word of God overcomes the fact of sickness being in our body. Now, it's so important for you to read the healing scriptures out loud, read them over and over and over and over. Because how does faith come? Romans 10, 17. Look at your handout. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The enemy tries to bring sickness on us continually, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. It is not enough just to have read the healing scriptures last week or last month or have heard a teaching on healing last year. No. Faith comes by hearing. Present tense. Faith does not come by having heard. Past tense. You've got to hear the Word and keep the Word of God before your eyes continually, especially in the area of healing. I tell you, does He ever give you a break in this area? By the, by the time you receive healing in one area, He's trying to bring sickness in another area, isn't He? I tell you, and we are not exempt. I don't care. Look, I have been attacked physically, I think, more during this series, uh, these weeks that I've been teaching on healing, than I have been in years. Why? Because the enemy comes to steal the Word. And, but he can't do it. It's just like, you remember, what, three weeks ago, I was at work on Tuesday, picked up a box of paper. I loved the printers every day. I've done that job for 10 years. And that day, I don't know what, but the enemy just attacked me and I pulled a muscle in my back. I tell you, we are not exempt from the enemy trying to bring sickness upon us. But I had to I had to do what I'm teaching you tonight. I had to go to the Word of God and I had to read the, the healing scriptures and I had to speak them. And did I feel healed? No. Did I look healed? No. I walked still. I walked crooked. But am I walking stiff? Am I walking crooked tonight? No. Why? Because healing came into my body. Because I I kept the Word of God. That is all I have done, is listen to, to teaching on healing. I've got some tapes that are almost 20 years old on healing, and, and I have played them so much that they won't hardly play. But I, I have played them things, and I have played them hearing the Word of God while I'm eating breakfast, while I'm putting on my makeup, while I'm getting ready. I've got to take the recorder for and hearing the Word of God. Because how does faith come? By hearing. hearing. And I tell you, the truth of the Word of God overcame the fact that the poor muscle was in my back. And it's the same thing with whatever the enemy brings upon you. He doesn't give you a break in this area. He wants to defeat you in the area of healing, I think, more than any other area. Why? To keep you ineffective. To keep you from right. being able to, right. to serve God to the fullest. The enemy right. wants to hinder you in this area, I believe, more than any other area. And another area that we miss it concerning healing is that many times we speak or we say what we feel instead of saying what the Word says. We are hung by the tongue. Yes. <laughs> Look at your hand out. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. With your mouth, you are either speaking words of <coughs> sickness and disease, which are words of death, or you are speaking the word of God, which is words of life. And it 
if one or the other is going to be in your mouth, either death or life. You're either going to be speaking words that bring sickness and disease and death, or you're going to be speaking words of faith, which is the Word of God, which is words of life. The power is where? In your tongue. In your tongue. Look at your handout. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus is speaking in this passage. And Jesus said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall do what? Say, Say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You may have sickness in your body that looks as big as a mountain. And it looks like that there's no way over that mountain. But what did Jesus say to do to that mountain? He said to say to that mountain. He said to speak to that mountain. You are to speak to that mountain of sickness that is in your body. You are to speak what? I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Is that what you're to speak? No. What are you what are you speaking when you speak words like that? Death. 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 Right. right. That's right. You are to speak to that mountain of sickness in your body. And what are you to speak? The word of God. Are you to deny the circumstances and say, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. You can say that 500,000 times a day. And is that going to bring healing to your body? No. What's going to bring healing? The Word of God. Speaking the Word of God in faith. You are to speak the Word to that mountain of sickness in your body. And that mountain of sickness before your eyes will begin to grow smaller. And it will begin to grow smaller. And it will begin to grow smaller and smaller and smaller. Until it has been completely removed by the Word of God. And the truth of the Word has replaced the fact that that mountain of sickness was in your body. The key is to speak. To say the Word of of God. Turn to the book of James. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And we want to pick up in verse 2. James chapter 3, verse 2. The word says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect or mature man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor listed. Look at verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, or look, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Man, your flesh can't tame your tongue. Who's the only one that can tame your tongue? The Holy Spirit within you. Look at verse 2. Verse 2, I want you to look at that word offend. If any man offend not in word. That word offend in the Greek means to trip or to err, as in making an error. So James is saying, if a man does not offend or trip or make an error in his words 
or with his mouth, he is a perfect man. And that word perfect in the original Greek means mature. And James says that he is able to bridle his whole body. And that word bridle means to guide, to hold in check, and to restrain. So James is saying, if you don't make an error, if you don't trip with your mouth, with your tongue, and say the wrong thing, then you will be able to guide. You'll be able to hold in check. You'll be able to restrain your whole body. The words of your mouth controls your whole body. And James gives us two word pictures to illustrate this. One of them is verse 3. He gives us a word picture of a horse. And he says, Behold, or look, we put bits in horses' mouths that they know when the rider is in the saddle. No, the rider decides which direction that horse is going to go. And if the rider decides that that horse is going to go left, then what does he do? He pulls on the reins that he has in his hand. Those reins are tied to what? That bit that's in that horse's mouth. And if the rider decides that that horse is going to go to the left, and if he pulls those reins in that direction, then is that horse going to go right? No. No. That horse is going to go left. And if the rider pulls the reins to the right, is that horse going to turn around and go the opposite direction? Is it going to go left? No, it's going to go in the direction that the, that bit is pulled that's in its mouth. In this passage, concerning the area of healing, the horse represents our circumstances of sickness in our body. And that bit is our tongue. And our tongue determines which direction our body is going to go. Our tongue controls the whole body, James says. What does he say? Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. Why? That they may obey us. Our tongue is our bit. And our body must obey what our tongue speaks. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. The words of your mouth will turn your whole body around. It will turn your whole body from sickness to health. The words of your mouth will turn your whole body, just like that bit in that horse's mouth will turn the whole horse around from one direction to the other. But if you speak words of sickness, if you say I'm sick, if you say I have the doctor's report, the doctor says I have a heart problem, if you speak that, the words of sickness continually, if you say it, say it, say it continually with your mouth, are you going to be healed? No. no. You're going to stay sick. Why? Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Right. And we choose which one we're going to have. We choose whether we'll have death or whether we'll have life. We choose whether we'll have sickness or whether we'll have health. It's up to us to choose which one we'll have. Look at your handout in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. The Word says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God says you only have two choices. You're either going to choose life or you're, or you're going to choose death. You'll either choose blessing or you'll choose cursing. You choose which one you're going to have. And God says, I want you to choose life. Why? So that both you and your seed and your children may live. God tells us which choice that He wants us to choose, but it's up to us 
to choose which one we want. He don't make the decision for us. Why? Because we are the rider over our own circumstances. God doesn't control our body. We are the ones that controls our body. And we choose whether our body continues to be in sickness or whether we turn our body around and begin to walk in health. If I choose life, I'm not going to get death. Just like this horse, in, the, in this example, in the Word, this horse would never turn around, would it, if that rider didn't pull on the reins and cause that horse to turn. That horse would just keep wandering around, going its own way, going in whatever direction it wanted to go. But that rider has to pull on the reins, pull on the bit in that horse's mouth, just like we have to make the decision that we are going to change our circumstances. And if you make the decision, and if you decide, I'm not going to have it this way anymore, I'm tired of being sick and tired. Did you ever get like that? Sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you decide, I'm not going to have it this way anymore, you won't have it that way anymore. If you decide, I'm not going to put up with this, this sickness, whatever it is, in my body anymore, then if you speak the Word of God in faith to that sickness, the truth of the Word of God will overcome that mountain of sickness and it will leave. Now look at verse 4. Here's the second example that James gives us. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm or rudder, whithersoever the governor listed. When the captain of a huge ship wants that ship to turn, does he say, all right, all the crew members, jump overboard and push on this ship and turn it around. Is that what the captain does? No. The captain, when he wants to turn that huge ship, he walks over to the wheel, grasps that wheel, turns that wheel, which in turn, turns that small rudder at the back of that ship. Mm -hmm. And that small rudder turns that huge ship whichever direction the captain wants it to go. And our tongue is our rudder in our ship, which is our body. And our tongue can turn our body from sickness to health. We can turn our whole body around by the words of our mouth. Look at verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. The tongue can defile the whole body or make the whole body sick. Or the tongue can make the whole body well. Your tongue sets the course for your body. The words of your mouth determine whether your body is going to go down the road of sickness or whether your body is going to turn around and go down the road of health. The enemy will try to bring sickness. He'll try to pressure us and pressure us to speak negative words out of our mouth, to speak words of, I don't feel good. I think I'm getting sick. What does verse 8 say? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. If we speak negative confessions with our mouth, we are poisoning our body. If we say, I'm catching a cold. I, I think I'm taking the flu. You know, I was around so-and-so yesterday and they had a stomach virus and you, you don't, my stomach don't feel real good. I wonder if I'm catching that stomach virus. We are poisoning our body. We are hung by the tongue. The words of our mouth are poisoning our whole body. And what do we do? We take the cold. 
we catch that stomach virus. Why? Because we spoke it out of our own mouth. By thy words thou art justified, and by thy words thou art condemned. It's up to us. What words are we going to say? Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Look at your handout. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Our words will either snare us and cause us to fall into the enemy's trap of sickness, or our words will free us from the trap of sickness that the enemy has brought upon us. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Look at your handout. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Where is the word? The word is nigh or near you. The word of God is as near to you as your mouth. But notice, the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word must be in your heart before you can speak it out of your Amen. mouth with faith. Amen. Because in order for faith to arise within you, you must have put the Word of God in your spirit man. And when you speak the Word of God in faith, then you will turn the course of your whole body. Just as the rider turns that horse, just as the captain turns that ship, you will turn your whole body when you speak words of faith. The Word of God out of your mouth then your body will obey you just like that horse has to obey the rider and the horse turns about by the will of the rider the rider is the master over that horse now look at james we're here in james real quickly james chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 it's talking about if you need wisdom, ask. But now notice verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What is a double-minded man in the area of healing? It's the man that sees himself well one minute and sees himself sick the next minute. It's having two thoughts in your mind at the same time. When you read the healing scriptures, you see yourself well. But then, when you put the word down and go about your business, your body tells you, I'm sick, I'm sick. Feel that pain? Feel that pain? The Word of God says, look at your handout, 2 Corinthians 10, 15, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you see yourself sick, that is an imagination, a thought, a picture in your mind that is exalting itself against the knowledge of the Word of God that says, By whose stripes ye were healed. Mm -hmm. And if you are around someone that has a cold and they're sneezing on you and they're coughing on you and breathing on you and they say, Oh, I hope you don't catch this cold. Immediately, the imagination pops into your mind, doesn't it? And you see yourself taking that cold. You see yourself getting sick. That is an imagination. And you begin to take that thought. And what do you do? The Word says, take no thought saying what you shall eat or what you shall drink or what you shall wear. You know, take no thought saying. If you take that thought, what are you going to do? Say it. The next thing after you take a thought, you're going to say it out in your mouth. But you are to do what? What does 2 Corinthians 10, 5 say? Casting down 
imagination. We are to cast that thought down. And we go to the Word and we speak the Word of God. We read healing scriptures and we cast that thought down. And then that thought comes right back up. It says, oh, but I'm still hurting. Oh, but I'm still running a temperature. And we cast that thought down and it comes right back. You've got to go to the Word of God and meditate on those healing scriptures and speak those scriptures out your mouth and see. Meditate on that word in the area of healing until you see yourself well. And will you do that in five minutes? Probably not. It will take some dedicated time of being in the word reading the Word, meditating on the Word, speaking the Word, but healing will come. The Word of God will turn your whole body around from sickness to health. Most people will lose their healing over a counterattack of the enemy. What do I mean by that? Let's say that you come up for prayer, and you've got pain in your side, and you come up and you say, I want the elders to anoint me with oil, lay hands on me, and pray the prayer of faith. Well, they lay hands on you, they anoint you with oil, they pray, and you go home and you say, yeah, because I felt warm, I felt that anointing going in my body. Yeah, I, I received healing. And you walk out the door, and you get home, and that same pain comes back in your side. Your side starts hurting, maybe even worse than it did before. And the enemy is right there to place that thought in your mind that says, I'm still hurting. I must have not got healed. I thought I got healed, but I must have not got healed because I'm still hurting. That is an imagination that the enemy is bringing and trying to steal the healing that you received when hands were laid upon you and you knew that the anointing of God went into your body to, and brought healing to your body and now the enemy is trying to steal your healing. What do you do? You go to the Word of God and you read the Word out loud. You speak the Word. You meditate on those healing scriptures and you keep meditating on them. And you keep speaking them. And faith will rise up within your heart. And you speak those words of faith out your mouth. And you say, no, by His stripes I am healed. Jesus already bore this pain in my side and I don't have to bear it. Therefore, I receive healing in my body. And I'll not move from the Word of God. When the elders laid hands on me, when they anointed me with oil, when they prayed for me, the anointing came into my body and healing came into my body. And I'll not have this. Devil, you go. You take your pain and you go because the Word of God says Jesus Himself took my infirmities, bore my sickness, and with His stripes I am healed. Romans 10, 8 says, Remember, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith is where? It's in your heart first, and then it comes out your mouth. Your tongue speaks the word of faith, and it will turn your whole body around. From sickness to health. Your tongue, your words is what controls your body. Just like the bit in the horse's mouth controls the direction that horse is going to go. And just like the rudder on that ship controls which direction that ship is going to turn, your tongue controls which way your body is going to go. Whether it's going to go down the path of sickness or whether it's going to turn around and go down the path of health. Your, your tongue, the words of your mouth 
turns your whole body around and it has to obey you. It has to obey the word of God's coming out of your mouth, your tongue, the words spoken from your mouth turns your whole body from sickness to health. I want it, don't you? Amen, amen, amen. 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 I choose to walk in health. I, the enemy has stolen enough from me in the area of sickness. I want all that Jesus has provided for me. He provided not only forgiveness for sins, but healing for our bodies. And I want all that Jesus provided for me, don't you? And I receive it by faith. And you receive it by faith. And when is faith? Now faith is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.